Sid Vicious, the bassist of the legendary Sex Pistols, faced accusations of murdering his girlfriend, Nancy Spungen, 43 years ago. Nevertheless, the enigmatic circumstances surrounding the case continue to baffle numerous devoted fans of the iconic band. In an alternate reality, Nancy Spungen possessed the potential for remarkable achievements. This exceptionally talented young woman accomplished a high school graduation at the tender age of 15 and embarked on a journey to the University of Colorado. However, her path took a different turn in 1975 when she found herself entangled with the law after a marijuana purchase from an undercover officer. Subsequently, she abandoned her college pursuits and relocated to New York City, immersing herself in the vibrant punk scene. Her passion for bands like the New York Dolls and the Cramps eventually led her to become part of the Sex Pistols' fold. In 1977, during her visit to London, Nancy crossed paths with Sid Vicious, whose birth name was John Simon Ritchie, the renowned bassist of the legendary band Sex Pistols. Their encounter marked the beginning of an unbreakable bond between them. While Sid found himself increasingly entangled in the realm of substance abuse and alcohol, his affiliation with the Sex Pistols provided some semblance of control thanks to the band's management. Following his departure from the band, Sid made endeavors to forge a solo career. However, when left to their own devices, both he and Nancy spiraled down a destructive path of self-indulgence. During the autumn of 1978, Sid and Nancy took up residence at New York City's Chelsea Hotel. Their hotel room had garnered a notorious reputation as a hub for both drug users and dealers. Testimonies from neighboring rooms indicated a constant influx of people, with visitors coming and going at all hours. On the fateful morning of October 12, Sid awoke to a grim discovery in their bathroom. Nancy lay lifeless on the floor with a grievous stab wound to her abdomen. Forensic examination determined that she had bled to death. Police investigations unveiled that the murder weapon, a 007 folding knife, matched one that Sid had acquired on 42nd Street sometime prior to these tragic events. Subsequent to his arrest, Sid provided conflicting accounts of the night Nancy met her demise. Initially, he admitted to a heated altercation with Nancy, acknowledging his involvement in the stabbing while insisting he never intended to take her life. Later, he changed his narrative, asserting that Nancy had fallen onto the knife accidentally. Eventually, he claimed a complete lack of recollection regarding the events that transpired on that fateful night within the confines of their hotel room. Because Sid was so out of it on drugs when he was arrested, his recollection of what happened the night of Nancy's death was not particularly helpful to the investigation. There is still some debate in the punk community as to who could have killed Nancy and whether it was really Sid. There is no concrete evidence to indicate that anyone other than Sid committed the murder. It is believed that Nancy was killed as a result of a robbery by drug dealers when a friend of Sid and Nancy noticed that a large sum of money was missing from a hotel room. The NYPD never verified this fact, leading many to wonder if Sid was really responsible for Nancy's death. In his book, Pretty Vacant, A History of Punk, journalist Phil Strongman suggests that the actor and part-time man who supplied drugs to Sid and Nancy, Rockets Reglair, may have been responsible for Spangen's death. Reglair denied involvement in Nancy's death until his death in 2001. On October 22, 10 days after Spangen's death, Vicious attempted suicide by slashing his wrists with shards of a broken light bulb. He was taken to Bellevue Hospital for observation and while there, attempted to jump out of a window and crash. After paramedics pulled Sid out of the window, they reported that he screamed, I want to be with my Nancy. While on bail, Vicious gave an interview in which he said that Spangen's death was inevitable and that it had to happen. He asserted that Nancy always said she was going to die before she was 21. In the same interview, Sid stated that he wanted to be underground. Despite being a former member of the popular punk band Sex Pistols, Vicious did not have much money to spend on legal fees. It wasn't reported at the time, but Rolling Stone's lead singer Mick Jagger paid legal fees for Sid. Decades later, John Lydon finally took his hat off to Jagger when he said, Mick Jagger stepped in and got good lawyers involved on Sid's behalf. Mick never mentioned it or used it as self peerism on December 9, 1978, Vicious attacked Patti Smith's brother Todd at a concert in New York City. He was arrested and sent to Rikers Island to undergo a 55-day detoxification program. When he was released on bail on February 1, 1979, he was placed under the supervision of Sex Pistols manager Malcolm McLaren. On February 2, 1979, Sid was pronounced dead of a heroin overdose. 
Because Sid was the prime suspect, his death ended the investigation into Nancy's murder. Writer Alan Parker, who was close to Vicious Mother and Beverly, who before her suicide in 1996 asked him to try to prove her son's innocence, made the documentary Who Killed Nancy. The film was released in theaters based on 182 interviews and re-examination of police footage. I just wanted to clear his name, Parker said. Of course, I wasn't there, but I could swear Sid didn't do it. Parker found evidence in Vicious' favor. On the day of Nancy's murder, Vicious took 30 pills of Tuinol, a powerful sedative, and slept through the night. Police found fingerprints in the hotel room of six acquaintances of Nancy and Sid, but none of them were interviewed. According to witnesses, a drug addict named Michael, who lived on the sixth floor of the hotel, visited the couple and was later seen with a wad of money tied with a purple hairband tied to Nancy's hair. In Parker's movie, Vicious friend Steve Dewar says, I think this guy did it, Michael. Parker said, the only people who can tell you the truth about what went on in Bank Street that night. One is Sid and he's dead. The other is Anne, Sid's mother, and she's dead too. The mystery of Nancy Spangen's death will probably never be solved, and we are left wondering if Sid really could have attacked Nancy with a knife and left her for dead.